Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and we are vlog number 11 and this is August 15th, no, August 16th, 2019 and uh, moving right along through summer, oh my god, summer's almost over and uh, maybe we got a month or so more but you know what, let's make the best of it and uh, keep getting those dubs out. So before we get started, of course, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and uh, keep this content going, keep it alive, and I uh, keep bringing you the vintage scene and how-tos and tips each and every week. And um, if you can, for the price of a cup of coffee, price of a cup of coffee, look at that, mutts and bugs. Now we got mutts and bugs mugs. How cool. Uh, for the price of a cup of coffee, you can send a small PayPal uh, donation uh, to this channel, and again, it keeps the content alive and you know keeps us going here. And you know what, guys? Anything you can throw at us is just fine with us. It's very much appreciated. And uh, the link is in the description below. Uh, so where are we at? Uh, Mike's 1956 Build-A-Bug project with the evergreen metallic on it and the tan ragtap sunroof um, and the canvas material and the beautiful tweed interior, beige tweed interior with brown vinyl is done. And uh, basically gonna be calling him up today and saying, hey, make a schedule to come get your car um, very cool looking car uh, it's one of the like third or fourth time we've done that color you know clients seem to really take to that evergreen metallic um, and we use a Subaru color for that and people ask me all the time what's the color code if anybody wants to know it's 55 M as in Mary so you can use that and you know there was a color in uh, the 50s I don't remember which years to be exact, maybe 56, 57, that had a color for convertibles called almond green. Uh, so it's very close to that. It kind of mimics that. So I just kind of use the Subaru color because it's easy for my painters. Just give them the code. No mixture at all has to uh, go into it. So um, yeah, Mike's is done and uh, very, very cool. Of course, 36 horsepower and just oval ragtop glory guys and you know me I've said it all the time that if you can get an oval ragtop uh, go get one so um, tomorrow I'm doing something a little bit different uh, you know guys I've been getting into RC and so tomorrow in Hudson Valley in Haverstraw actually right near where my Treffin is gonna be uh, there's an RC air show so they're doing RC planes I don't fly planes but I am bringing uh, some of my RC cars, I'll be bringing some of my Monster Beetles, of course, my uh, little electric cars, and we're also going to be displaying, uh, they allowed us to display a few of our Volkswagens there, and uh, I can sell my coffee there too, and it's a really cool place, so if, we, if you're in, in this area, you guys want to come check it out, it's free to all, uh, really cool what they do there, I got some videos of, you know, planes flying and such there, I'm going to bring my gear, and a really nice spot in, uh, in Haverstraw, um, right on the water. You see the river, the Hudson. It's a really, really cool view. So it's Hudson Valley Radio Control Club. Uh, so HVRCC.com, if I got that right. Hudson Valley Radio Control Club, HVRCC.com. They got information there and if you, if you guys are interested. So I'm doing that and we're gonna be selling the Mutts and Bugs coffee bags. Remember guys, I got espresso beans, I got Guatemalan beans, and I got the Colombian beans. And uh, again, if you guys, anybody wants to uh, purchase a two pound bag of whole bean coffee from us, and again, it helps a sheltered animal, it helps a little dog, you know, find a home. We throw proceeds that way. And um, yeah, it's just, just, just for a good cause and uh, gets our brand out there, so, so to speak. So check it out, Mutts and Bucks Coffee. Uh, I got a cool email this week, and I'll try to keep it short and sweet. Um, Chris, how do you, what's the secret to keeping uh, a healthy beetle? I said, ah, that's a cool title, so I'm definitely going to put that in the title for the vlog this, uh, this week. The secret to a healthy beetle. Um, so basically, I guess before and after, if you want to look at it as... Um, you wanting to have a healthy beetle, you gotta find a healthy beetle to start. So it's like you gotta find the right product to begin with. And what I mean by that is something that's not so hacked up, something that's not uh, butchered. You want something that maybe doesn't have major accidents with it, but over time, you know, 
we're finding that those cars are getting snatched up to real clean, straight cars. So, sorry for the shadow on my face, guys. Uh, so you want, you want a car with good bones it, that you could tell was not abused or hacked up or, or anything like that. You can tell. And if you watch my videos, you can see that, you know, with the motors have been swapped, chassis have been swapped, uh, body work has been really shoddy and, and things like that. You know, if the car has been lowered or really souped up, you got to kind of think that the car was most likely then, you know, maybe it was raced pretty hard. Maybe the per, you know, person's hitting the throttle a lot, hitting the brakes a lot, you know, so a lot of things can happen. That's the first part. Okay, so now you get your project, you get that going, you want a healthy bug to start off with. Uh, but then how do you keep it healthy? And us, you know, at our shop, we like to keep things stocked. So I think the more stock you stay, the healthier and the less stress you'll have with your Beetle, the more you want to customize, the more you can start opening up Pandora's box, so to speak. So, you know, you want a, a bigger motor, you want dual carbs, um, you know, a lot of times now you're going into aftermarket parts, and I've spoken about aftermarket parts for, for a long time now, and how, uh, you know, year after year, the quality of the parts just seems to go down, and uh, prices keep going up. Uh, so, um, you know, the more German you can stay, the healthier your bug will be, the less stress and less problems you'll come about, that will come about. Always got to think, though, you're going to be tinkering. There's always going to be things that come up with the Beetle. You have to understand this. It's just the way it is. They're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. So 30 years old if you're in the Mexican Beetle world. But, um, yeah, so if you're 40, 50, 60 years old, you got to think. I mean, how many... That's a lot of life there, and you don't know where this car's been. So you got to think about that. Um, so there's going to be tinkering, all you know, pretty much all the time. I don't care how well restored a beetle is. I've gotten some of the most top quality beetles from other shops come to our shop, uh, and I found there's things that come up, there's things that arise. So um, yeah, you're going to be tinkering. So now, what I usually do is. You know, when I take my cars out, I'm not, I'm not here to race them. You know, I like to keep cruising speed. If I'm on the highway, I'm 55, 65 miles an hour. If every once in a while I want to punch it and see how low, how fast it goes, I'm not keeping it there. Um, you know, I'm not. I don't want to overheat my motor. I don't want to stress my motor. Um, so I stay. I just cruise, just chill, and cruise. That's all. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm not ramming on the brakes. Um, I. I you know, people tend to look a lot into different things when it comes to the Beetle. I like to think simple and stay keep a simple mindset. Like I'm putting basic oil in, 1030 weight oil. Now, if you go to the Samba and you see their forums on oil, oh my God, guys, it's miles and miles of pages of guys arguing back and forth of what oil they're putting into their Beetle. And I just think, you know, we live in a day and age, of course, we got the internet, so we're getting... Um, shouts from over here, you're getting shouts from over here, getting examples from over here, and everyone's got an opinion, and then it tends to be you're looking into things too much. Just again, it's a simple car, think simple. So, basic oil, nothing synthetic, nothing crazy. Okay, same with fuel 87. I'm putting in, I'm not putting in anything else. My cars run cool, everything runs fine. If everything's hooked up correctly, you know. Sometimes you just gotta take a step back, go to sleep, go do something else, and then come back with a fresh mind. And, you know, just keep it simple. Again, I say 87 because that's the freshest gas, guys. You go to a gas station, you know, in the middle of nowhere, nobody's gonna buy high test from this guy. You know, so who knows how old high test is sitting in that guy's ground, in the tanks. That's old gas, stale gas. You want fresh gas going through your car. So keep it simple. That's basically my mindset when it comes to keeping a healthy beetle. Um, yeah, every do your valves every six thousand miles, regardless, you know, of how. I don't know. Should I say you know? Yeah, every six thousand miles, keep it by the book, right? Go by the book. Keep it simple. If, like me, I'm only putting maybe twenty five hundred miles a year on my car, or less than that, two thousand miles a year, because of our weather. You know, in the winter time, we don't really drive them here. I just do the oil change and valve adjustment and check everything out every year, once a year. 
before you know when springtime comes around, before show season, before driving season, you know, I just do the check. If you're driving it daily and you're using it more often, you got a better climate area, 3,000 miles for your oil change, 6,000 miles for your, your valves. That'll keep the life of your Beetle. That'll keep it alive. It's some of the most basic things. So I just think simple. Look at your look at a book, get a Bentley book, or get a Haynes book even, and they tell you the requirements of when to do a tune-up. I guess around 10,000 miles or 12,000 miles you want to do a tune-up. Or like I said, I check everything once a year. I check the plugs, check the wire, just check it all because it's been sitting all winter. And when things sit, you know, things start kind of can get weird. So um, that's really it, guys. I mean, just think simple with these cars. Um, nothing complex. You know, we tend to overlook things sometimes. And then when you overlook things, you're, just, you're digging too much. And, and then a lot of times you make things worse. So um, if you want something fancy to look fun, to look great on your motor, fine. But again, don't overdo it. Because then I think once you start messing with one thing, you start opening up Pandora's box on another end. Uh, so again, I like to keep my car simple. And uh, you will have a happier bug. So, uh, that's it. So, if you guys got anything to add to that, um, please let me know. And, um, yeah, put it in the comments section below and you can help the community out. And uh, that would be great. But uh, I think that's the most simple things I can think of. I mean, just, um, yeah, uh, you know, run the car every now and then. If you're going to run, if you're in the winter time and you're in storage, you know, every... I, I go in I once or twice a week, I just start my car up and just get the juices flowing, get the motor running and get things moving. Uh, just because, you know, with stale gas sucks. And then the gas today is terrible with the ethanol and such. So, you know, it doesn't take long for gas to kind of go bad. I think they said about a month and a half, two months, and that gas is crap. So, and then what that what does that do? It breaks down your lines, breaks down your hoses, and, you know, it's, it sucks, you know. Uh, in today's day, I mean, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. They do not go higher than, you know, 10% ethanol at these pumps because I think that's kind of the Mason-Dixon line for the Beetle. You start going over 10% or hitting 15% ethanol. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. If you know better than I do, you know, when it comes to this fuel, I think it's just making things a little hectic for the, our Beetle. So, and in almost two months, on another note, uh, in almost two months, October 19th, 2019 is our annual fall foliage cruise. I'm here to remind you guys again that is a killer event that we put on. It's about eight years we've been doing that. And I have a good feeling this year that we're going to get a great turnout. If the weather stays the way it's been uh, so far this latter half of, of uh, summer, um, I'm telling you, I think we're going to have a great turnout because uh, last year it was kind of the weather was iffy, so the turnout wasn't as high. I mean, but years before we were. You know, we usually generate 50, 60 cars. So uh, just to tell you, in two months, the f my annual full foliage cruise is coming around, and that's generated a you know a great following on a on a nationwide scale. And I get people that come in from different states that participate in that cruise. So it's uh, it's really cool, and I'll probably have some uh, some of the filmmakers on hand maybe this year to to help us shoot shoot that event. So. All right, guys, uh, August 16, 2019, in the bag, and summer's moving right along. It looks like we're going to have somewhat of a decent weekend, and if you guys are in the area, you want to come to that RC show and see us, we're going to have a few Volkswagens there. I'll be selling my coffee there and uh, seeing some RC planes and things like that, so um, that's it, guys. Chris from ClassicVWBugs.com. If you got any questions or comments, you can either email me or pop them in the comment section below. I will respond to you. I'll do my best to respond to you because I get flooded. Uh, pretty much on a daily basis. <laughs> it's it's all good. I'm trying my best to respond to everybody. But um, oh, well, one other thing I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about, and uh, it's about my channel. My YouTube channel is it's growing very steadily. I mean, it's on a you know nice little steady incline. I'm not nothing leaps and bounds or anything like that. But uh, these vlogs are resonating really nicely. Um, but do understand that I I try to put out a couple videos a week, and these videos do take time uh, to produce takes time away from uh, my projects and uh, and I, I, I I'm all good you know supplying you guys the content I love doing I love communicating with everybody but we have gotten very busy at the shop and my time is valuable and I need to 
uh, start backing away a little bit from the uh, video content uh, that I've been putting up on YouTube. Um, there's a balance in life and, you know, business evolves and I've gotten busier on one end where I have to dedicate my time uh, to uh, my well-paying customers. And um, so don't be surprised if uh, you know, September rolls around, maybe even October, and uh, you might not see as many videos, um, uh, so to speak. So I think I might be doing some form of a digital detox. <laughs> uh, I've seen that a lot lately. A lot of YouTubers are doing that who've got channels online that they're uh, getting a form of burnout. Um, and it's not like it's, you know, I'm sweating doing these videos or anything. It just takes a lot of time. And then when time is on your mind and it's ticking along and the projects are just kind of, you know, sitting there and I see my dad and Ramsey and, um, you know, working on the cars and I'm sitting on the computer, I kind of, I feel terrible. Uh, so I need to get my hands dirty uh, a little more uh, just because I, I got to get these projects out and get them done. So um, just uh, be on the lookout. I might be doing a digital detox in September, October and I might throw a video out here or there, but uh, for the most part, um, I gotta dedicate my time to my Beatles guys. So uh, that's it. Um, yeah. So have a great weekend and uh, enjoy your Beatles. Go out and drive, spread the vintage scene, and uh, I'll hopefully see you next week. Okay, take care. Um.